Welcome to the Just Xander podcast. I'm your host, Xander Gray, and this is episode 42. 42. I like that number. It's the meaning of life. If you know that reference, please, please let me know. That means you're cool. And if you don't, that's okay, too. So um, I've been... I've been releasing on Fridays, but I'm going to switch it up again. I think I might release it either on Monday or Tuesday from now on just because it's easier that way. I think Fridays, I feel like people are just ready for the weekend. They don't really, I feel like they don't want to hear me just kind of talk about random stuff, you know, so I figured that would be best. Um, yeah, I've been, I was out of town the last few days. I went to California. I went to Disneyland. That's where I went. And it was quite literally the happiest place on earth, you know, um, I really, I really, I really enjoyed myself there. I went and I went there for a few days, and I had fun. I had a lot of fun. I didn't really get to see a handful of friends there, just because it was the days were tight. But I had, I had a lot of fun there. Um, I didn't. I checked out Star Wars Land. I didn't get to build a lightsaber. Uh, just because I didn't really plan it out. Okay, so I've never been. I've never been Disneyland or California Adventure, so I didn't want to look at anything to prepare myself. I just wanted to just go to go, and I decided to do that. And I went with... I went with... Uh, a lady that that I've been seeing. So, a lady, Jesus. Um, <laughs> I've been seeing someone, and it's been good. And I am not ready to talk about that yet, just because I want to keep that. I want to keep that to myself for now. You know, just because it's everything's good. Every it's not like a bad thing. Everything is good. I just. For right now, I want to keep it. I want to keep it close to my chest, at least for that, for now. Um, when I get closer to whatever that is, then I'll talk about it. But for right now, I like that it's just, it's just personal right now, you know. And I've enjoyed that. So, I've all I can say is we went together to Disneyland, and I had. A lot of fun, and it's been a while. You know, it's been a while. Feeling that sense of that sense of being content, you know, of being okay, and that was that was nice. That was that was very very nice. It was very very comforting, and I I enjoyed it. I enjoy traveling with her. And I used to not like traveling because I've done a lot of traveling. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. There was a lot of fucking people there. Holy smokes. Because, I mean, obviously it's Halloween coming up. Yeah, so I'll be, technically I'll be releasing this on Halloween. So I might just do that. Yeah, so... It's the 28th right now, currently, that I'm recording. So Monday is Halloween, so I might just release it on Monday. Anyway, maybe, maybe, I don't know yet, maybe. And it was, there was a lot of people there. And it was, I I genuinely don't mind crowds as much just because I've been around crowds. I I'm comfortable with crowds. But as of late, I prefer 
not having people around <laughs> when you do things. You know, I prefer, uh, I prefer, what is that word? Where solace, I guess, when, when you're, when you're doing things. So I, uh, I, I didn't feel it wasn't as fun having like a lot of people walking around. Anyway, today, today I really want to talk about the Disney thing was just a, a short snippet that I just wanted to just throw it out there because I feel like I didn't want to wait too long to not talk about it. Disney was fun. I might come back and talk about it again. Uh, and here's the thing. Here's my thought about the whole thing when I was there. And it's not even related to the things that I saw or, or or the rides. I mean, the rides were fantastic. Some of them could be better, but a lot of it is fantastic. Star Wars Land was amazing. I felt like a little kid. I was like, I was giddy. It, it was it was it was an amazing experience. And man, that is one for me to keep uh, cherish forever. Honestly. But I was on TikTok as as all of us are now watching, scrolling this thing on TikToks. And uh, I saw this one TikTok or I they call it a talk or a tick. Anyway, I'm old. So one of them was talking about and I'm going to read it to you. Right. It's real. It's related to me talking about the people in Disneyland. I'll get to it. Okay, so I'll, I'll read you like a little. Somebody posted a video on this thing, and you can look it up. Anyway, it's called Sonder. S O N D E R. Okay, and it's a noun, and it means the realization that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own, populated with their own ambitions, friends, routines, worries, and inherited craziness, an epic story that continues invisibly around you like an anthill sprawling deep underground with elaborate passageways to thousands of other lives that you'll never know existed in which you might appear only once as an extra sipping coffee in the background. Cool. Uh, as a blur of traffic passing on the highway as a lighted window at dusk. Okay. Um, if you're watching the video, so it's so funny. I decided to put, um, I decided to put, again, I'm trying something new here. I, I, I have a big TV. Well, it's not a big, it's a decent size. You're, anyway, I put a background on it and then the commercial came out. It's on YouTube. Anyway, I hope that didn't throw you off a little bit. So, so Sonder, what it means is that you're realizing that the people around you, strangers, right? Think about this. Strangers, they have their own lives, their own worries and their own little quirks that they do. Um, the things that anger them, that 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 make them fall in love, that make them angry, and you don't know, you have no clue. And here's another question: How much do you really know your family member, or your loved ones, or your friends, best friends? You know. If 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 you have a best friend or a family member that you're super close to and you know every single thing about them, that is great. That is fantastic. And you have that connection. But oftentimes we don't. We really don't know the person that we are either talk, talking to or, or, or having conversations with because what you see and what you get is just clearly just this 
it's like they have a plate and they put the best ingredient on that plate. And sometimes, sometimes the plate itself, the food itself isn't that good. You know what I mean? It's either too salty, meaning too angry. They're too feisty or they're too sassy, but it's it's on the plate already. But their deepest, darkest, anything, you would never know. So anyway, to, to, to come back to the, rela- uh, the, the related to Disneyland, it's like I'm seeing all these people and when I got back, I saw that post, that noun, that meaning, Sonder, and it just kind of made me realize that, you know, we we only know we only know what what we do. We only know how we feel certain things and we expect our friends or or, or our family members or who are we are close to, to kind of understand you, to get you, to love you, to give you what you need. But are you doing the same thing? I mean, essentially what it means is empathy, empathy, right? At least that's what I got from it. Anyway, I, it's from a, it's from a, website called Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. And there's a bunch of other stuff on there that explains um that exp- here I'm gonna look it up real quick. Uh, uh, okay. And it's a website, right? Um again Sonder means what I just read to you. And there's another thing called Watashiato. I think it's Japanese. I don't know. It might be. And that means curiosity about the impact you've had on the lives of the people you know, wondering which of your harmless actions or long forgotten words might have altered the plot of their stories in ways you'll never get to see and this is so this website is so fucking interesting and uh i haven't gotten a chance to really dive into it you should look into it it's that it's just it's so beautiful Uh, again i have my moments right i have my moments of silliness and i nine times out of ten i'd rather be silly and laughing all the time and every once in a while and again i'm not like this all the time i know you hear this podcast and you're like this guy is too deep and he's too cerebral and it's just like shut the fuck up again i'm not like that all the time but when i am it's the most it's so beautiful to me these words and these perspectives again I'm not, I'm not like intelligent. I have my own thing. I have my own ways, but I'm not like crazy smart or crazy moody or artistic in that sense. I don't think that I am. Um, I don't cry when I read a poem. Sometimes I read a poem. I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? Sometimes I don't get it. You know, I'm not. I'm an idiot, okay? I have my moments of clarity and moments of intelligence, but 9.99 times out of 10, I'm a fucking idiot, okay? Sometimes I don't know what I'm even talking about. But right now, this is so beautiful to me. Again, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm veering here, but check out the website. It, it, it. I just love words in general. I just love perspectives and it make, it just makes you kind of think outside of yourself just a little bit. You know what I mean? And that is so beautiful. It, it just made me think like we, we're so stuck in our own thing, which, which granted we should be. We should be a little selfish. It's not even selfish. You should work on yourself at, at, at being better. Work on, I have a, a problem with that. I'm, I'm a people please, pleaser. Struggling to talk there. I 
I tend to tend to other people and I tend to forget about myself. And I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better at that. Uh, and, and sometimes it's hard. You know, I distract myself with doing things and outings, being with people. But I oftentimes, I don't like being alone in my own thoughts. And I, that's why I try so hard. That's why I do a lot of work, like working out meditation and like falling back in love with music and writing music and, and expressing myself in that way. And finally letting go of other things that I have no control over. I don't want to say finally, I'm still working on it, but just accepting, accepting that, that music is my love and music is, is the thing that I will always do and that I shouldn't avoid it anymore. You know, I've been finding ways and excuses to not do it just because it's just not my thing. There's no, I, th I just feel like I'm not good enough for it, you know, sometimes that if I keep pursuing it, it just feels like I'm pursuing something that I have no, um, I, f I feel like I have no reason to be there. I have no, like, why are you here? You know? Anyway, I'm trying to accept that. And with that type of revelation, it just made me realize that everybody has their own thing. You know, everybody has a thing that they're dealing with, getting to know themselves, because that that's like a superpower, right? Like I've t what I've talked to before, knowing my issues and my flaws and my everything that I don't want to bring up or, or, or realize that I have, it's tough, you know, you're calling yourself out, you know, you're calling yourself out for doing certain things that, that, that sometimes you can't really control, you know, how you react, even though you have complete control how you react and what you say and how you feel about certain things. But at the moment when it happens, you're going to feel how you're going to feel. And and lo logically, and if you think about it logically and, and objectively, you're like, why are you feeling that way? Like you have no reason to, but you just do. Especially with anger and, 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 and sadness and the, the feeling of worthlessness and emptiness and fucking all that shit. If, if I can just have a switch where I can just turn it off, that would be, I would, I would be rich if I could. I mean, I guess they do have that pharmaceutically. So what am I talking about? I feel like more and more when I give in to when I give in to accepting that accepting my flaws and accepting that I you know what I fear the most is a lot right I fear I fear failure even though I don't mind failing, but I do fear it. I fear not being successful. Again, and then you ask, like, what does success mean to you? I fear living a mediocre life. I fear boredom. I fear that I'm not good enough. I fear like I'm worthless and all that. 
and I don't want to live a medio, mediocre life. I want to be somebody. I want to, and it sounds silly, and I, and I don't know if anybody feel the same way. And it's like, oh, you want to be famous? I don't know. I I don't want to be famous. I want to be somebody. I want to be. These commercials are killing me. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy. I wonder if I get uh, demonetized, like like I get a lot of views. Anyway. I don't want to, yeah, I want to be somebody. I want to be somebody important. I want to be, I want to inspire. I want to motivate people. I want to, I want to live a rich life. I want to experience new things and I want to not worry about Whether or not I'm going to find, like, whether or not if I'm going to be able to find something to to make me happy. I want to be fulfilled. I want to be happy. And I know I'm not the only one, you know. When you're sitting here, again, coming back to that word, when you're sitting here, you're listening to my if you take the again, if you take the time to listen to what I have to say, blabber about my life, you might know me more than that I know you, because I'm putting it out there, right? Begrudgingly, I mean, I guess when I'm old, I'm already old. I guess when I get older. These are the things that I look back on. And I'm like, why Why am I talking about that it kind of thing? So this is really a documentation of my life journey with the podcast, with the thong, thongs, with the songs that I do, the songs that I release, and the words that I write on paper, the journaling. All of this is looking back at what I was doing before, how I was before. Who, who I was back then, and it's interesting, and I wonder what that would do to me, how I would be in the future. And I don't want to live a mediocre life. I don't, and, but I also need to accept that. And I have a problem accepting that, accepting that my life or anybody's life, depending if it's boring, what it's okay. It's okay if it's not exciting. It's okay if it's not, you know, you are enough. You are somebody. You are worthy of living a life and how you want to live it. And if you don't do a certain thing or if you don't become this inspiring musician or artist or whatever, that's okay. And I have to say that to myself because I have a problem of accepting it. And I I don't want to blame anybody for it because it's it's up to me. But all we do is we compare ourselves to one another. You know, all we do is like, oh, he has that job and he's making six figures, seven figures. He must be happy. Maybe he's not. I don't know. Like, I have friends that are making good money, great money, you know, and and I thought about, okay, maybe I should go back to school and do this, or maybe I should. But am I going to be happy? Am I going to be fulfilled? You know? But I also don't want to struggle the rest of my life, man. I don't want to do something I absolutely love and not be able to provide for myself or not be able to provide for the people that I love, you know? That was one of the – 
I technically didn't get any closure from the divorce. I didn't. And I had to accept it. And I think one of the reasons for the divorce was I was still chasing this, this art form, podcasting, music, and and I stopped and I was miserable and I was doing the video thing and photography, photography thing, but I'm so fucking burnt out, you know what I mean? And that was one of the reasons, like I wasn't doing enough, I wasn't making enough, and that was really hard to fucking hear. That was really fucking hard to like, I'm not, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. How, you know how shitty that felt? It felt fucking shitty, man. So now the rest of the days that I have, that I'm living my life now, I'm trying to figure out monetary shit because I was like, because I got devalued, you know? I felt the feeling of not, being good enough and I had to I had to accept it I had to know that even if I enjoyed it was tough it was tough coming back to this it was tough coming back to the podcast it was tough making music again because I felt, why the fuck should I be doing that? It's not going to make me any fucking money. It's not going to, you know, I'm fucking 35 years old. I'm not going to be able to provide for shit for myself. The fuck am I doing? That's how I felt. I still feel that and I battle it. I battle that feeling every day. And I'm fucking exhausted. And you're, right now you're listening, taking the time to listen to me bitch and moan about my life and how I feel about it. It's kind of comical, you know? And... If it makes you feel any better, that that's great. I I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I don't want you to feel like doing this podcast is a form of therapy for me, and uh, you know it's it's. It's another way, it's another form of putting my thoughts down and how I feel about certain things. And it's so, I'm trying my best to be as honest and as vulnerable as I can. And again, I'm sitting here in my room talking about this stuff and I'm not talking to anybody. I'm alone in this room. I'm talking to a camera and I'm recording it. And after I record it, I put it all on the computer, I edit it, and I have to listen, I have to listen to the whole thing and pick out snippets that I want to post. And usually most of them are pretty vague, but I listen to the whole thing and I listen to myself talk about, you know, th all this, all this honesty shit, you know, that I feel like nobody wants to fucking hear and nobody gives a shit about, you know? And I'm doing it essentially for myself, for me, to in the hopes that if I write it down, if I put it on paper, if I put it on th this form, that I would f get clarity from it, that I feel better about, about what I have to do. I feel better about my life. I feel about, uh, you know? Again, I used to say, I used to say I envy people who find their niche.
rich, you know, people who find things that they enjoy and they're able to do the work and monetize with it. I, I have so much, I don't envy them. I just, I respect them so much. And that gives me inspiration to, to find my own thing, to find my art, find my gold, you know, my treasure. And there are days where I'm like, am I going to ever find it? <laughs> am I ever going to find it and, and be successful in doing it and be and love it so much that I can do it as a job? There's fucking commercials on YouTube. This is fucking ridiculous. It's pissing me off. Uh, I'm going to find I'm going to find a different uh, screen so annoying oh cool okay so uh, I really appreciate really anybody that has like taken the time to to listen to this and and and, and comment and, and sharing it reposting it and and texting me about it texting me about what i talked about and it's again i don't get a lot of people doing it but it's so it's it night it's nice man it makes me feel good you know it makes me feel that that whatever i'm saying it's not silly and it's not like I hope that it, 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 again, I'm not giving you advice or anything. It's more like I'm just talking about my, I'm just really complaining about shit, you know, and, and I just end up being instrapect, instrapect, instra, wow, I can't say that word. <laughs> I'm tired. It's late. Um, introspective. Wow. And uh yeah. You know, I just want to say if you can figure out yourself, if you can figure out what makes you tick? What makes you feel a certain way? Question, question everything, you know? Ask yourself, why do you feel this way that you do sometimes? And if you keep asking, if you keep digging within yourself, and I feel like you might find some answers, you know, that could help you. You know, I have I have a lot of hangups. I have a lot of issues. You know, I have abandonment issues, codependency. Uh, I have the feeling I have my self esteem is up and down sometimes, and I work very very hard to not show it. The insecurities and everything, very hard in public. You know, around people. Because I am comfortable around people. I can talk to people. I can I can have a good conversation, conversation with people. But inside, uh, inside it's it's a, it's a it's a storm, you know, of 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 emotions and and wild wild feelings of. Uh, emptiness and not feeling enough and insecurities and all this shit but i've worked i'm working on it i'm working on it you know because a lot of it it's not true a lot of it is just it's just really how you talk to yourself you know and i'm not 
worthless. I am enough. I am worthy of somebody's time. I am worthy of my own time. I am deserving of love and happiness and fulfillment. I am worthy of all that. I am a good person. And <laughs> I'm such a sap, you know? I'm a sap, man. I, uh, I love love. I... I love being in love. I love taking care of somebody. I love gifting things to people. I love being there for people, making them laugh. Uh, I, I love uplifting people. But most of all, I, I'm... I miss and I love being in love, you know? I miss it. I miss that feeling of comfort and that feeling of assurance and a feeling of security. But life is, Life is full of uncertainty, you know, and we have to, I have to accept it. I have to accept it and roll with it and be ready, not be ready, just be okay with sometimes things not going my way, you know, and things not happening the way that I want it to, but it doesn't change the person that I am. It doesn't change, it, it affects my life, sure, but how much it affects my life, it's up to me, you know? So I'm working on it. I'm doing the things that I need to do to heal and to get better. And that is one day at a time. I fucking hate that saying, but it is the most accurate if you're doing the work one day at a time, will be one day at a time, and you will always be moving forward. But you have to do the work. And if there are days where you don't want to do the work, that's okay too. I want it to be as productive as I want it as shit today, and I feel like I didn't do shit today. I just want to lay down and face down on my pillow and sleep. That's what I wanted to do today, but I, I didn't. Took me forever to get out of bed, but um, little wins like that, I, I tried to I tried to savor it. I tried to kind of pat myself in the back a little bit, in the back a little bit, even if it's small, you know, it's okay. I did, I, I, I you know, I, I did a handful of things today, so I, I'm okay with, with the rest of the night, but I don't want to go. <laughs> Every once in a while, I don't know this is what I'm talking about, and I don't want to go because this is comf comforting for me. Talking to you is comforting to me, even though I'm in a room alone talking to a camera. Hearing myself talk through the headphones. And I feel a sense of comfort because I'm in the moment currently talking about stuff and and I'm doing my best to be more in the moment of things. So your homework, just kidding. Uh, I implore you to check out this website, Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. I'll I'll add it to I'll add it to the uh, link and stuff, so you can check it out. It's pretty it's pretty fucking cool, and look up Sonder, and, and look up the words. It's just it's it's the perspective is so clutch it's so on point you know it makes you think i don't know if you're 
if you're empathetic like me, if you're if you're very very aware of people and very very aware of people out of things outside of yourself, you might find it interesting. And if you're not, I mean that's great too. You pay attention to your own shit, you know. Some people are very self-involved and that's okay. It's not a bad thing. It's just every once in a while, think about the people around you, you know, because sometimes what they're going through, you have no clue unless they tell you. And, and I think that's why when we watch movies and stories, we fall in love with complex characters because they're real characters, two-dimensional characters like um he's a hero he's angry and that's it like you know what i mean he's a hero he's very brave and that's it people aren't like that people are very gray you know they might do one thing for somebody and do an evil malicious thing to somebody else you know, that's why we love complex characters. We love characters that have depth, you know, that because that's what we are. We, we, we're depthful. That's not a word. We're full of depth, you know, and we're full of complexities and all of that. So, so people are genuinely very interesting. If you take the time to know somebody, if they're not a bad person. So anyway... I think I should go. <laughs> I feel like I can just babble on. So I hope what you take away from my podcast or, or anything that I do, I hope that it's out of, it's genuinely out of love. Genuinely out of love and out of wanting to be accepted and to be seen, you know, just like everybody else to be seen and heard and to be accepted as a human being, uh, to be enough really, you know? So I really do appreciate anybody that, that really takes, that really would take the time to look at my stuff, look at my content, look at the music that I put out, you know, anything like that. I, I'm always blown away by people taking the time of doing that. So I really, really appreciate it. I really, really do. And and I hope that you also do the things that you enjoy and that you love and that brings you happiness and fulfillment and joy. You know, I hope that that there are things out there or someone out there that would do that for you. And, uh, and sometimes life isn't that bad, you know? It's really not that bad. We just have to be okay with the things that, that don't go our way. Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day, great night, great afternoon, great afternoon. Um, thank you. Talk to you soon. Peace.